Good morning, fellas. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to more CSGO news here at Esports Talk. Let's just not waste your time, okay? All of today's stories will be timestamped down below. As per usual, you might know a few of these stories coming up, because the first of which is God Sent Roster is now officially here. Pronax, still obviously a co-owner or a partial owner of that lineup. He is very happy to have them back. That will be, as expected, brought to us by Nell a week and a half, two weeks ago. This will be the ex-Smash and the former No Chance roster along with them. Sticko, Michael Lely, the boys, Zen and such. Yes, they they will have a chance at, unfortunately enough, the European minor yet again. I say that because ever since last night, I've been thinking about all the teams out there who cannot actually take advantage of that potential rule approaching next majors minors, uh, which we talked about yesterday, that being complexity and their North American roster that's actually European guys based in North America. Thus, they might be able to play the North American minor. God sent their roster will not get that same chance. But besides that, though, this roster, I could not be more excited because even when Michael Lely and his team was able to join Smash. I was very excited because they had finally signed somewhere. Mike Lilly was is a notorious player for how many rosters he's been a part of and not for a lengthy amount of time, not for a good amount of time ever since his fall off from the NIP days. I think a lot of people out there were left wondering if he could actually make it back to the top after such mistreatment from other organizations. And uh, with that now being said, you know, formerly FaZe and NIP, then about 20 rosters ever since then, or, you know, a dozen rosters. It's a, a long number, guys. He is now worked his way back to a godsent roster who, by the way, is a very solid looking team. I wouldn't say a killer lineup, but certainly a team who, by the way, as a part of no chance, they had their chances. I've talked about it time and time again. They had their chances in momentum. And yes, I believe it was against Mouse Sports. They fell short against, but either way, they were on the on the brink of actually making a major. And yes, it is possible. It's a far-fetched possibility. At the end of the day, though, this roster, well-deserved, has now been signed to godsent. I will be a fan of these guys, and I hope I hope it lasts more than a short stint of time, which is what people probably are expecting. I hope it's a long-term investment. I hope it's a long-term signing. We will see what these guys can do and hopefully be a bit more reinvigorated by this new signing to a roster and a, and a name who has not been brought up for a, quite a while. And good news, Godson is now back with a decent roster. We'll see what they can pull off, though. Just wait to see how it goes, okay, guys? I'm trying to hope for the best here. Also, I think probably the most important story, the kind of the most interesting story out there, brought to us by Will Land a couple days ago from Nade Shot Stream is just one short clip I'll play for all of you guys where he talks about the extreme bid wars that some organizations, some teams out there, the extreme funds they're willing to put towards whatever esport they want to be a part of. Of course, in direct reference to Evil Geniuses, many of us do now know the money they have dumped in not only CSGO but other esports, it's been quite extreme. Nade Shot goes on to talk about how worrying that might be for the future and along with that, how they had to, as 100 Thieves, actually spend their money more smartly uh, in terms of what roster they had to go for. Obviously, they were going to go for the NRG guys. Evil Genius has got them instead. So they went for Renegades, which was likely a much, much cheaper option. It's a hard conversation that you have to have with players like, hey, I really value you as a contributor and player for our team, but the money that you want us to pay you is unrealistic. Like, it, But that's the thing. A lot of these other teams will pay it. Evil Geniuses is a great example. They wanted to come in to see us go. They were a new team. They got a lot of funding. We're going to outbid everybody, man. We're just going to we're going to pay a premium. We're going to pay the highest price and we're going to sign one of the best CS:GO teams in the world. They played a huge buyout. They're playing they're paying these insane amounts of monthly salaries to these players. They're going to run out of money. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. They're not going to run out of money. They're just spending a lot of money. And this, all entirely, I know it's just a stream clip, but I really love these kind of things because it's so it's so natural to just have a Nate shot talk about it and just be so open and honest. He didn't give too many details. He didn't need to because it just sparked the conversation of two to three years from now, what will we be saying about this move that Evil Genius has made compared to 100 Thieves? If you guys are not aware, EG, they re-entered not only CSGO with a $3 million roster, one of the most expensive, if not the most expensive, transactions in CSGO history, along with that re-entering League of Legends, paying 30 plus million dollars for that former Echo Fox LCS spot for League. I mean, they dumped a ton of money in a very short period of time. They must have gotten some sort of funding and then dump it all right back out. In two to three years from now, like Nade Shot made, made sure to mention, they could be broke. Obviously, he's not trying to speak poorly of them, but that could be a mistake they do make. So I always think it's very interesting to see, especially around not only CSGO transactions, but esports transactions, how much money is 
being dumped out there as Nade Shot even even mentioned made sure to mention the salaries, which by the way in CS:GO and League of Legends are two of the highest in esports and all of esports. And so very curious to see what we'll be looking back on two to three years from now and who made the right choices. And 100 Thieves and Nade Shot could certainly have been making the right ones compared to other organizations. Also, in very short news out there, no one's really talking about this. Uh, thanks to my writer Isaac as well, he caught this. It was actually a deleted tweet by Mixwell. And again, just take it with a grain of salt, guys. It was a deleted tweet, so I'm not sure if this will go through. Translation for all of you, though, and I'm sorry for the poor screenshot. You know, when you link screenshots or link these tweets elsewhere, they obviously don't delete in those platforms. And so he linked it to me. A translation for all of you, pretty much all of the biggest Spanish organizations, the Giants, the Riders, Heretics, so on and so forth. I think Queso as well. Pretty much all of the biggest Spanish organizations in CSGO are apparently trying to leave the LVP or the Spanish Superliga, which is uh, the, their version of a pretty solid league over there. Accordingly to that tweet, though, those organizations are trying to leave that league and form their own. I have no idea as to why. I have no idea as to when that tweet has now been deleted. Hopefully more updates on that for you guys sometime in the future. Also, closing stories out there, just two kind of funny side stories, which I'm not going to take uh, you know, too much in terms of seriousness, especially when it comes time for a possible Cloud9 Skadoodle return. It was actually a stream, I do believe, last night. Thanks to Reddit for catching this, guys. And people, a, a few people talking about this. That being Cloud9 entering Ska's stream and asking about if he has a team for CSGO. Now, we obviously know the turmoil that's undergoing the current Cloud9 roster as Gen G is targeting at least a couple of their players. And so, if this is actually a troll or, you know, somewhat serious or somewhat a hint for the future of Ska returning to CSGO, I have no idea. We'll leave it as, as that. It's probably a troll, but if, if it's not a troll, eh? Could be a possibility. Also, very lastly, ESL Pro League matches do continue this week. As of last night, though, prompting an ESL tweet himself. That's going to be Tabson. I don't think I've ever in history of covering any any show out there, thousand plus videos, ever seen a single player do much, th this much damage to esports and gaming equipment. Apparently, during ESL Pro League just yesterday, I do believe. Tabson himself went through three keyboards. He spilled coffee on one. Others were apparently just uh, breaking on him. Also, one monitor and one entire PC tower. One guy. And that's why ESL was like, hey, you know, we, we only have so much backup, but we might have to start charging for this one, Tabson. I think it was just very, very unfortunate luck of all the backups out there. But one player, three keyboards, one monitor, one tower. Tabson stole the show. Big clan maybe not so much. But as always, hope you guys all enjoy. I've just been really working my tail off over here, guys, just pumping out videos. So I do thank you all for watching um, all this content out here. Really been enjoying the week so far. And thank you all for watching. I'll be back here tomorrow with some other CSGO news. If you guys are curious about that, it will be uh, some of the highest CSGO transactions we have seen of all time. I'll be talking about that tomorrow morning and some other videos coming out all weekend long for you CSGO viewers, for all you gaming esports viewers. I'll have videos out here all day long, all weekend long. And so next time, I hope you guys all take care, drink your coffee. I'll see y'all back here sometime soon.